All right, welcome everyone. I am JJ. Let's go ahead and tackle an example problem. So we are saying today we have a frame as loaded as shown, just a 2.5 kip force up at the top of a real basic frame. Um, we have a pin at C, a two force member at AB, a thin link, weightless link, two force member. Um, we know our allowable average normal stress in AB is 20 KSI, and the allowable average shear stress in pin C is 10 KSI. Let's determine what's our cross-sectional diameter we have to have of member AB, and then what's the required diameter of pin C? Then we're going to assume pin C is subjected to double shear, and that will really matter for us as we move forward with this. Um, we are in double shear here. I have not used either of those pins before. Uh, we're in double shear. There we go. There's a working one. Um, so let's go ahead and go for it. If I'm trying to figure that out, I need to know for stress, I know stress is a force divided by an area. Um, in my two force member, that will be the force in the member. In my shear stress, that will be the force in the pin. V, to get V, I need to know the force there. Um, either way, let's make a free body diagram so we can apply equilibrium and find those forces. So our free body diagram, I can draw this as just a straight vertical member. At the bottom, I have a pin. So let's put in a CY going up and a CX going to the right. If I go up four feet from there, let's say that's about right here, I get to member AB. Because I know this is a two-force member, two, we can immediately just say, well, that force has to go in a straight line along the member. So from B down to A, or else from A up to B. Logically, if I'm pulling to the right up here at D, this has to counteract that sum and go down and to the left. Um, so we'll show that down and to the left. I have the force in member AB. So F AB. And I know some geometry for that. This member goes over three feet. It goes up four feet. So I can label this as a three, four, five triangle. Um, the last things I need are from B, I go up two more feet, two feet, and I get to the very top where I have that 2.5 kip force applied in here. Um, I have three unknowns, FAB, CY, CX. I should be able to find all of those without too much hassle. If I were doing this, I would start and say, let's sum moments at C. We'll get FAB. Realistically, I could also sum moments at B. I get CX in there. Either way, we're kind of going to move forward and we can figure things out. So let's go ahead and do moments at C. With positive going counterclockwise, if I sum up those moments about point C, well, I have FAB's Y component passes straight through point C, so we won't include it. The X component will cause a counterclockwise moment about C. So put this in as positive. So three-fifths of my force, F, A, B, times distance from C to B. It's an X force. I need a Y distance, four feet, times four. Uh, my 2.5 kips will cause a clockwise rotation about C, so subtract its moment out. Minus my force is 2.5 times my distance is four plus two, six. Should get me to zero. Uh, if I solve that for FAB, we're going to get here that the force in member AB is 6.25 kips. Um, I'm getting as I come through here, I get a positive answer out from this equation, which means I assume the correct direction here. It's going down and to the left. I'm pulling away from my pin here at B. I'm in tension. So we'll stick a T on that for our two force members. We can say, are we in tension or are we in compression? Um, but from there, I can come in and say, what about CX and CY? Well, with FAB known, I have one unknown in the X direction, one unknown in the Y direction. Let's just sum forces and get those. So summing my forces in the X direction. Summing forces in the X. I have CX going to the right. I have 2.5 going to the right, plus 2.5. And I have the X component of FAB going to the left, so minus the X component. 
the x leg of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse times FAB. He's going to get me to zero. Um, but let's put in, I know FAB. Rather than writing this with two unknowns in here, let's put in our known value in here. Um, so rather than times FAB equals zero, we'll say times 6.25. Don't make a system of equations if we can just easily, as we do it, put in a known value. But that's going to get us to zero. Which if I solve for CX, I'm going to get that CX is 1.25 kips. And it's going to the right. We get a positive number from this, so I guess the right direction here. Um, finally, my last support reaction, I can just sum forces in the y direction. Summing forces in the y, I have CY going up. The only other y force is FAB. It comes downwards, so I'm going to subtract it, minus the y leg, 4, divided by the hypotenuse, fifth of FAB. But again, we still know FAB is 6.25. And that's going to get us to 0. Uh, if I solve for CY, I'll get that CY is 5 kips, and it's going up. Uh, for us to do this, though, when I actually, I have my force in member AB, I can find my stress in AB and find my area of AB right now. Uh, but let's go ahead and figure out what do I need for my pin. To get that pin, I need to know my force in that pin, which I don't want to work with just the X component or just the Y component. I need the resultant in that. Just like up here at AB, I didn't work with just like the X component of AB or just the Y component. FAB is really the resultant of those two. Let's find the resultant of CX and CY, and that's that force we're going to carry forward to start trying to find that shear force out. So my magnitude of that resultant force in pin C should be any time I do a resultant, I'm just using the Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of X squared, 1.25 squared, plus Y squared, 5 squared. Uh, if we were dealing with 3D, we'd have a plus Z squared. We're just expanding the 3D or the Pythagorean Theorem into 3D. Um, this is going to get us 5.15 kips, um, which would be my value I use as I try to start figuring out what's my shear. There's the force that's being applied to the pin, not necessarily the shear in the pin, though. Um, let's go ahead and keep going there. So I have FAB figured out. Let's work with member AB. Member A, B. So if I'm setting this up and trying to figure out what's that allowable stress in here, um, I know the allowable stress is 20. So sigma A, B equals 20 KSI. And I could write that as a force divided by an area. Or that is my force is 6.25 divided by my area of AB. Um, I can solve that for my area. Um, 6.25 divided by 20 equals my area of AB. That area of AB is going to get me to 0 0.3125 inches squared. Um, and what were we actually asked for in here? Um, the cross-sectional area of member AB. So that's good enough for us. We don't need to do anything else there. That's one of our two answers for our problem. From there, we can move on and say, well, let's take a look at pin C. For pin C, we're going to need to first figure out what's the shear force in pin C. Remember, we have looked last lecture or last time around in earlier examples that if we had um, single shear, the resultant force in the pin equaled the shear force in the pin. For double shear, that resultant force was double what the shear force was. Or my shear, V, should be equal to my force divided by 2. And again, that is specifically for double shear. For double shear. For single shear, they equal each other. But we were told, we underlined it before, we're in double shear. So we can come in and work with that. My shear force here should be equal to V is 
my force, my resultant force, 5.12 divided by 2. Or this is going to get me 2.58 kips equals 2.58 kips. Um, and that's what I'm going to use in my V over A to figure out my allowable shear stress. My tau C allow um, should be equal to what we were given. This was 10. Same way we were given 20 over here for that allowable stress in AB. Um, so this is my force, that shear force, 2.58 divided by my area of pin C. Or this is going to get me solving for AC. The area of pin C is 0 0.258 inches squared. Which isn't quite our final answer here. We asked for this one. What's our diameter of pin C? I have an area. I can get from area to diameter though. I could either divide this by 2 and use pi r squared. Or I could say that my area of pin C is pi times the diameter squared over 4. Pi r squared is the same thing as diam pi times diameter squared over 4. Either way, we're getting there. It's just where do we divide by 2, basically. Um, this is going to get me, um, this leads to my area, 0.258, is pi times the diameter squared divided by 4. So multiply by 4, divide by pi, and then take the square root. Technically, we have our diameter is plus or minus something. But logically, we can't have a pin with a negative cross-sectional area. So we're going to take the positive root here. This is 0 0.573 inches. Which if you go to your contractor and you say, hey, use a pin with 0.573 for the diameter, they're going to make fun of you for it. And they probably should because pins or bolts don't get made in that size. We want to come in and let's round that to the nearest eighth of an inch, give or take, um, in there. Eighth, sixteenth, some common unit for diameters. If I round that to the nearest eighth, I get five eighths out from that. Also, we want to make this bolt a little bit bigger than what we actually are getting here. Because if I go a tiny bit smaller, it's going to fail too early. So if we round up, I'm going to get that my diameter is five eighths of an inch which would be my final answer for our problem. Um, hopefully this is a useful video for us. If it was, stick around, watch more videos. Let's get you through this class. Let's get you an AOJJ.